BGL Copenhagen Major is about to make it to playoffs, and before it does, I want to take some time to look at some of the star players from every team that's going to be playing. And so far, we've already covered Dong for Team Spirit, we've covered Zantaras for Eternal Fire, and today we're going to be covering Jim Fat from Mouse Sports. One of the favorites to win the tournament, Mouse Sports are looking very good coming into this major, and I want to look at how they dominated complexity as well as how Jimmy kind of just is him, and we'll get right into that right after a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a site where you can trade skins that you already have to get some skins that you might want. That way you can hop into your next game with some fresh new skins. All you have to do is log into the site through Steam, put in the skins that you don't want anymore, grab the skins that you do, and then click trade. Trades happen almost immediately and any balance that you don't use in the trade will roll over for a trade that you might do in the future. Right now you can get a free $5 if you were to use code Austin on the site. And if you were to use my code, you would get an additional 5% on top of the 30% deposit bonus. So let's say if you deposit $100, that means you would get $135 if you use my code to deposit so make sure you guys check out skins funky and let's get right back into the video so this is actually the game that jimmy i'm just going to call him jimmy played against complexity to qualify for the major playoffs and one of the things that i want to look at about him is how he's very different than other players that we've covered he's incredibly good and he's also incredibly young this is his first major ever actually matter of fact i think it's uh it's insane to play at such a high level at such a young age but regardless he's not like other players because other players who are the carries of teams are typically oppers or really aggressive riflers think of like donk or oh i don't know maybe somebody that's a super lurker like rops but Jimmy is interesting because he doesn't really have a, a, a role that you just point your finger at and go, yeah, that's what he does. He's a support player as in he doesn't really go first, but one of the things that makes him so deadly is that he doesn't miss. So they rarely, Mouse of course, send him in first because they know he's always going to get the kills. And a lot of rounds in this game, you'll note that he is incredibly impressive because he either hits the first bullet headshot or he gets like the insane trade that you need. And uh, you know, you see it in this pistol run, he gets a 3k. So I don't really want to lie. This demo review is going to be very short compared to my other ones because I just want to talk about Jimmy and how I think he's insane. And this game is also very short because remember, complexity got destroyed in this game. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get through this. This won't be very long. Uh, Jimmy is somebody who's holding grenades for his teammates he's not the guy that's getting the grenades thrown for him he's throwing them for other people you don't see a lot of people that are considered to be the best player on a team do this so what he's holding right now is a flash for mid so if mouse want to go out mid he's got the first flash that's going to pop here which will blind somebody looking this way and the second flash that he'll throw will go like this which will blind somebody that's looking from donut right so that's the idea and his teammates will scale on the back wall but again it's just it's interesting that he's the one throwing the support of utility now the person that igls on mouse shui is I, I love his calling. I think he calls very well, and you'll see a lot of the times that Jimmy's in these situations late round because Mouse as a team play very slow. They don't throw away advantages. I mean, look at this round. They they have a very clear advantage here. Uh, like, the money is terrible. I mean, the complexity literally have no utility, and they're just contacting out. They're getting as close as they can before they exec, and this is another thing about Jimmy is that he is not really a lurker, but he is somebody that will go on his own to secure a round. Now, this round actually gets slightly out of hand here, and Jimmy knows that because he's in a main he needs to make the difference He actually steps out just in time to make the two versus two a 2v1 and then pretty much all Zerk has no chance here Now you'll see this a lot with players where you'll or I guess in teams in general where you'll have a majority Go from one spot with another person coming from you know the extremity to split The reason is is because if that person dies so like if if Jimmy were to take contact in a main the guys coming do not know that the A player is in A main, so they're just going to go smoke this off, and then they're going to fight everywhere else. But if they don't, like let's say the guy is playing big box, and this guy starts fighting towards Donut, then Jimmy's going to step out and kill him before things get out of hand. Or the other way around, if somebody's CT and he's fighting, Jimmy can step out A main and just get that kill. It's like thinking of like a flank, but it's not. It's, it's really essential in a team to have a player that can do these things. Now we're going to be playing versus a full eco. And the thing about mouse is that they don't really uh, respect the pistols. So they're just going to take this mid space and they're just going to walk out and pretty comfortably fight this round. And uh, that has nothing to do with Jimmy. That's just a stylistic choice from mouse on how they approach the ecos. So we'll skip this round. By the way, I'm, uh, I'm sorry for the uh, Jimmy killing JT thing in the top right. I'm not really sure why. It's CS2 demo viewer moment. All right, so another round here where we see Jimmy throws the cat smoke. It gets a flash drop for him, and, uh, you know, he's going to sit back here, and he's holding the nades again. Something that uh, I'm not going to sit here and watch because you guys get the idea. If you want the lineups, you can watch the demo yourself. But look, he's coming out, and he's, he's a trade fragger. He did not go first because, again, Mouser's setting him up to come out and 
get the difference maker kill, and then be in a clutch. And that is not for no reason because this kid is actually insane. He doesn't miss, and we haven't really seen an example of that yet, but trust me, you will. There's a reason I'm covering this demo specifically. So another thing about Mouse is that stylistically, like I said, even in heavy advantages, they freeze. They have no reason to really cross their T's and dot their I's here. It's a four versus two where they know that they got the majority of the kills in a certain area. They can pretty much group up and hit, but they don't. They hold a grout across the map. And this is actually really good, by the way. A lot of teams do this. They hold. So what do we see? We see one person here, one person here, one person here. I think that was Brawlin. And then one person's like a main holding for push. Why? Because when the CTs are in a bad situation, they will always group up. If it's a 3v3, you know, 3vx, they will always group up and they'll do gambles. So they'll either stack B or they'll walk push mid or they'll walk push A main or they'll walk down ramp, right? They'll do all these pushes because if they can get the info, that's the only way that they can win the round. If you leave your players on an island, so like if it's a three versus five and I'm like, all right, my A player, my mid player, my B player, if the T's come as four, so it's a 3v4 in this situation, right? So if the T's come as four, what's the best situation? This guy gets a random 4k i mean no we don't want to hold on that instead what we should do is we should have everybody play together that way if we run into four people we actually have a chance of winning and if they go the other way ah fuck it we'll just save because that's what you do in cs you just save if you if you can't win right so that's like the thing but mouse doesn't want to let that happen so they sit and they hold and what they wait for is they wait for these pushes right so if any of these players were to see somebody like let's say the guy holding a main sees two he's going to be like oh they're both here they're both here run b and that's a free round win they can't do anything whereas if they run around willy-nilly running jumping up and then this guy gets killed from house and then wait a minute oh we got to get, get the bomb back things can get out of hand and i'm only over explaining these things because this takes a lot of nerve and experience for teams to pull off because freezing is scary you're in a situation where you want to win the round and the, every second that you wait you feel like the team on the well the other team can start to pull it back but that's not actually the case they can't as long as you hit your shots and you're aware of where you can be pushed from this is really good and you'll see another example of that in this game that i really want to highlight so another uh, low buy here this is a round that's actually um where jimmy goes out it must have been the call he's gonna go out somebody else is throwing the utility it's actually torsi because he has the op he can't go out mid so they're gonna go out here jimmy throws the flashes he gets everything thrown for him and he's gonna step out and he finds grim now what's important to note is that he knows for a fact that there's more players in towards banana so what's he gonna do he's gonna wait for the smoke he's actually gonna try to blow it but he misses it by the way as an aside while we wait for this smoke can you believe that pros still haven't figured out a way to consistently nade smokes to make him go away? I see this happen all the time. Either way, so he knows that they're in there. He mollies the right side. He waits for the peek, but they end up double peeking because there's two there. And of course, he gets both kills because it's Jimmy. He doesn't miss. He will end up going down to the 5-7 here, but it doesn't matter. All right, going into the next round, we get a tack pause out of complexity. And what we get is directly off of the tack pause, they call an A execute. Why would they call this tack pause on complexity side? Well, you have to think about it, right? What's been going wrong for complexity? What's been going wrong? Well, what's been going wrong is the fact that they can't seem to get this area of the map. So they call a tactical pause to talk about taking this area of the map. Now, I think that there must have been some sort of uh, understanding of the idea of complexity because because they put so many resources here this round, they just call an A exec. They're like, yeah, you can go have it. Take it. We don't care. We're going to go away. Uh, very good calling. One of the things that's important to note and why this is even possible is because Mouse have thrown this top lurk smoke, which actually makes it so the B player can't get info unless they push down. Now they did push down, but if they didn't, they, the B player would have no info. And also this cat smoke is thrown. So the B players theoretically could, could, they didn't, but they could respect these smokes and get no info, which would make the A execute devastating. I mean, it's still devastating because everybody's out of position, but you get the idea. Uh, so they're gonna walk out here. And of course, again, look, Jimmy not going first. Insane the, like the fact is that shot from a main to CT is Really hard and they set Jimmy up to get the trade on the opera and look at this I mean, I think a liege overfought here, but still Jimmy got two essential kills because he didn't go first. He's a trade fragger. He's their star player He wants to be set up in these positions and you might think an inexperienced uh, in Oh my god an inexperienced player here might just force down the bomb but he doesn't. He waits. He knows that if he tries to plant too early, they're going to lose. This is the thing about Mouse. They're always bleeding out the time, and they're making every second count. They're making it so the complexity doubt. They're like, wait, did they leave? Did they push CT? Because they don't have someone CT, but they...
right? They're, they're doubting themselves. And look, Jimmy even gets the last kill. That's a 4K from him that basically single-handedly wins the round for Mouse. Granted, he was set up, but he made all the right choices. And most importantly, and I think the, the biggest thing to highlight is he doesn't miss. This kid doesn't miss. How is that possible? Like, have you ever seen anyone that hits more first bullet headshots than Jimmy? Because I don't know if I have. Even Donk hits these spray controls. He doesn't hit the first bullet head all the time, but Jimmy does. It's insane. Regardless, we see more of the same complexity on a half by Jimmy throws the nades, and this time he's going to be sitting towards a main. He's kind of just thinking like, well, you know, remember we talked about conditioning with Zantara's yesterday. Uh, one of the things is that the reason you don't push a main every round on ct site is because you want the t's to think like I, we don't like that spot a main ah we never play there but then the, what happens is the t's get used to that so one time they go in a main you might catch them off guard that's the entire concept with a main so jimmy's just looking for that because he knows that it's always going to be possible even though it's not likely but again look at what's happened they're just in these situations late round where they have somebody that's in a really good spot they're going to group up the hit is going to be too strong let's fast forward it here they're gonna come out here. Jimmy does go first here, but this is a different situation. This isn't a set exec. But again, he doesn't miss. He gets the kill, and the round is just over. Like Floppy has to save. So we go on to the next round. I could have did this demo review as a team demo review, but I specifically wanted to highlight players heading into the playoffs. But you can consider this a team demo review because Mouse is insane. Because it's not just Jimmy on this team. Exertion is nuts. Brawlin is nuts. Torzi is also an insane opera. I wanted to do a demo review on him from Overpass in this series, but I decided to do Jimmy instead. But Torzi, oh. Wait, there's a lot of insane players on Mouse. They definitely have what it takes to make a deep run here. So we see another smoke thrown from Jimmy. This time, support utility. He's got the nade. He's holding it for exertion. And uh, they end up deciding to go for a boost here. And it's important to note again, Jimmy doesn't is not the one that goes up. He boosts exertion. The boost, of course, is... Hold on, let me find my mouse. Is, of course, a boost to see over the smoke here. So if anyone tries to jump up, they'll see him. They walk out mid because they get the info that it's clear. Jimmy's going to molly cubby. And uh, yeah, they're going to go from here. A re-smoke from house. And they're going to go out mid pressuring again taking their time they know that mid is clear but they're not just running around like morons they're taking their time they double nade stack house and now here we go jimmy again not going first why because he wants to get the trade kill but complexity is actually in a really good setup to counter this and so they go down but still a really good round they set jimmy up that's the one time this game that jimmy actually misses an important trade but it doesn't matter they were in a good setup to handle that and they're still in a really good situation to win this game it's all right one round gets out of hand now we see more of the same jimmy doesn't have a smoke which means he smoked insta house he's going to be lurking now ancient is a map that t site is it's pretty much like this every round um but what's important to notice is that on this round we actually see a very big play made by exertion he's going to get into house now this is a more of the role that um, I do on my team. If anybody watches Team Wicked, this is the things that I do. And Exertion's going to get in here. And off of this information, Shui, I think is how you pronounce his name, is going to call a B hit because he knows that Exertion can call and uh, lurk late mid and catch the rotates. So Jimmy's going to group back up ramp and he's going to be walking up. And even now, he's not going first. It's basically made a point that he's not going first. And, you know, newer fans to the game might just go, he's a baiter. No, he's not a baiter. He's dying in person on purpose imagine if floppy would have just killed jimmy and then shuey got the trade now you're in a situation where shuey is alive and you would much rather have jimmy because he just you know he's, he's yeah, a better player to be honest um so yeah now this lurk that i talked about earlier exertion gets a really good round he uh catches all the rotates complexity thought that they cleared mid he hid from them perfectly and so that that lurk that i showed off is really important but again you know you're seeing more of the same now there's there's a couple of really insane rounds from jimmy coming up here but i'll show them again he holds the flash exertion goes down very unlucky four versus five what will you do now if you're on mouse well i'll tell you what you're gonna do you're gonna just do the same thing you always do. You sit and wait. Now it looks like, oh my god, what, they don't know what they wanna do. No, they, this is what they wanna do, because they're waiting for these pushes. They get another trade, 3v4. Things are gonna get a little weird now. Now this might actually buy time for Jimmy to have a chance to make a play. So they're gonna start, you know, doing their thing. Complexity still looking for information. And look at this, these, are, these guys are hiding. They know that this is possible. They don't wanna give that info. They're waiting for Jimmy to do something, and then they're gonna go. Because now Complexity have what we call bad info in the business. What is bad info? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's information that's actually not good. For example, if they would have cleared here and they see B is clear and then 
somebody walks down ramp and he hides in this cubby, they're going to be like, B is clear. They have bad info. What happens is they're going to end up rotating A when in reality they're here. This happens all the time in CS and there's really no way of getting around that. But you can know when the other team has bad info. Think about this, a concept that I can explain to you. Let's say you're in, oh, I don't know, house, like Exertion was last round. They clear mid, you know, you hear the guy step donut, they clear mid, they, they look, they don't see, and then you hear them run away. Or, you know, whatever, you hear this guy run away. You know, because they didn't see you, that they, they're making these sound cues because they don't know you're there. So you call, or at least you don't have to call this, but you know they have bad info. They think mid is clear, which means your lurk is going to get a, a 3K, like Exertion did, right? So they, you know they have bad info. Right, again, this round, they have bad info. They peek, they didn't see them. Now, they don't do anything crazy off of this, but they do have bad info, and they're head stack looking mid. Uh, they think it's clear. They have an idea that it's you know possible for them to be here, but here they go. They start to sneak off. Elise gets caught by Shuey. Eh? You know, and there's only like a certain degree of things that you want to blame complexity for because yes They did play bad, but I mean like they did get um, outplayed quite a bit uh, and here we have it The exec comes in and Jimmy's gonna get up again. He did not go first Even though Shuey had the bomb. He did not go first in the cave either They want him to be alive in the clutch They want that and the reason is is because in these situations these 3v3s He is the difference maker and you'll see it again here So Grim's on the flank and Jimmy knows he's in a really good off angle and it's on land so you can actually hold these angles this angle right here you might think it looks like it sucks except it actually doesn't because it's a little bit of an off angle especially when you're playing on that side he steps out as well with the flash from Brawlin and he gets a kill on the floppy this kid again is so talented you know it looks like everything just kind of falls into his lap and that's why it's so impressive it looks like he's just playing the game but when you do this or when I do this I miss or I die right away he just has a way of maneuvering around these situations that's just so impressive to watch. Now, this is exactly what I talk about, the conditioning, but yeah, you gotta get up early to catch Jimmy. He's always gonna be ready for that. This is exactly what I talked about a few rounds ago when I talked about the A main thing. That means that Complexity are saving this. They're like, okay, when we need a round or when we need an opening, Elise will go play an A main and we might catch Jimmy. Nah, and this is the round that I talked about. What just happened? Let's rewind it because I really wanna talk about it. So. It's a concept on every map, in 4v5s and also in 3v5s and whatever we talked about earlier. What happens? Well, let me tell you. Get ready, I'm gonna push my glasses up for this. What happens in 4v5s? Well, the CTs need information because they, if they do exactly what I said before, where they play three on one site, one on the other site, you know, if they don't go to that site, they lose. If they go to this site, they still probably lose, right? So what do they do? They push for info because if they can push for info, they can make an educated stack and have a good flank. So it's really common in 4v5s on Ancient to push down ramp, to push down mid, to push A main. And again, we've talked about this. Mouse are very aware of that the other team wants to do this. You've seen them freeze and hold. I already talked about this. But what's important to note is that sometimes what will happen is instead of just pushing one spot, they'll push multiple spots because they think, well, if they kill the one guy, they're at least not going to know about the other guy and we can have a good flank still and we have a chance. The thing about Mouse is that they must have a code word for something where they all just stop and hold because look at what happens here. We have the re-aggression coming in from Complexity, which I like, by the way. You might think that this in a 4v4 is like, it's a little troll. I don't think so at all. I think this is exactly what you should do. 4v4, there's too many question marks. You will have a gap. You can't look at everything in a 4v4. You just can't. Or if you do, it's going to be incredibly weak, right? So pushing to maybe get info is good. The problem is, is that Exertion is holding mid and Jimmy is holding a main and of course they're leaving b now and look at what happens grim thinks okay this is definitely the play but jimmy is waiting for the a main aggression imagine if you're grim an exertion a completely different guy is holding the mid push you're thinking you know what maybe there's a world a main's clear if they're if they're here i might get one if they're not here i can flank b and they're ready and that's actually just jimmy i mean the positioning from him is just insane i mean think about it you know, you know how much nerve it takes to get a kill in a main and then immediately just go, yeah, I'm gonna hide in this corner because I know they're gonna re, re I know they're gonna push. I know they're gonna push. It's insane. I, I love the way that they're playing. And it's not even flashy. This isn't like somebody dropping 40 kills, you know? This isn't like a 3K, 4K every run. Like, this is literally the most dominant CS you can play and like I said when you watch this on the broadcast when you watch the PGL stream You might go. Yeah complexity. They just they suck and to be honest Yeah, they didn't play good this game But you cannot take away the fact that mouse is playing 
lights out counter strike and more importantly jimmy is playing lights out because he just he, again he, he's set up for success and he's a player that does not give away these positions Unfortunately, he couldn't see, so, you know, he can miss what he can't see. Mouse will still end up closing this round because they have a really good lurk on Sui. He's going to get all the way around. This is the same concept as, well, what happened is if um, Jimmy, I this since uh, this demo review was short, I'll give you a bonus. The reason that this is allowed to happen is because the A-Execute pulls the rotates, hold on, which, I mean, I'm assuming you understand that part at least, but this is the same concept, you know, they're all rotating, you know, they're getting the kills, complexity is like, all right, it's perfect, and then they're like, wait a minute. Where's the bomb? Wait a minute, who's on B? Aw, oh, man, and then they realize that they got this lurk. So then you'll see Grim will run as fast as he can to try to kill him, because he knows he's alone. I mean, they know that he's alone. They know he's here. It's pretty obvious that he's he's here, right? But Sui, ha Shui, sorry, has the uh, advantage because he can pick anywhere. So Grim will run and try to find him right away. But the reason I bring this up is because this is a round winning play, but this is exactly what would happen for Jimmy. If Jimmy was playing A in, in a situation where, you know, things are going crazy, you might see, you know, in, a, in an alternate timeline, let's say they execute B, right? They execute B, they get the kills. What will happen is, you know, some lurkers will walk out mid and try to go house, and some lurkers will walk out A main and try to flank CT, and also, if they get to here, they'll go, come back. It doesn't matter what the situation is at all at the pro level. If you have somebody and an advanced flank like this, you will always go to the other side. Even if they're about to plant A and Shui says, I have B, 90% of teams will immediately run and go here. You might think, why? You have both sites. No, you don't. One site is significantly safer than the other. Like this one, first of all, think about it. If you plant, like let's say, let's say um, they plant in this situation, right? Two versus four, because this guy is going to be too late. He has to walk. It's 2v4 and... By the time they get the bomb, like they can lose this super easy, and they probably will, right? Whereas if they go the other way, they have a three versus four, where somebody has an advantage, and most importantly, will more than likely get a guaranteed kill, which basically effectively makes it a three v three if you go to the other site. Now I know that that's like you know assuming he gets the kill, but it's just true. That's what happens. So. Here we go. Shui's gonna come in. Grim, sorry buddy, I know you made the right play, but he's just too far. He's too far, and uh, they're gonna win the round. So there's your there's your bonus tip. Now I'm not gonna lie, as far as Jimmy goes, he doesn't actually do a single thing on CT side, but we'll still look anyway. Pistol round, funnily enough, they save. I've never seen anything like it. 11-1 up, they just save. They just save. That's insane. So uh, the next round, they can actually have a really good buy. Jimmy gets dropped to Famas again. They drop him a Famas. He has armor. They're going to push A main. Wow, what is this? This is something that you, of course, expect. Nobody holds A main. Nobody, nobody holds A main on the round like this. If you're complexity, you're thinking, you know, we don't need to hold A main. I mean, let's just go take mid, do a gun round. No, hold A main. They, 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 what are they going to do? I mean, they're going to try to take, you know, they're going to try to take banana control. They're going to go down ramp. They're going to fight heavy mid. They're going to do all these ideas that that's what they're thinking. Like, because oh, those are the most common plays. What isn't common, though, is sprinting through A main. I got to be honest with you. I've never seen this before. This is the first time I've ever seen this play. Sprinting through A main, never seen it before. Jimmy goes, they realize that they have timing, and they're walking. This is actually a funny round because Shui walked through the smoke, which actually, um, you know, it's just it's just a little funny moment. But Jimmy gets the kill, and they're going to accelerate into B, and the, the hold is too good. Exertion, I don't know how he got that second kill. If you watch my reaction on stream, because I'm restreaming these matches, I was like, what? That was insane. And uh, yeah, Jimmy's on the flank, and again, he just uh, he doesn't even get to play this round. And we go into the final round on CT side. I wish I could say it was impressive, but it's not. I'll tell you what he's doing anyway, though. What he's doing is he's holding this Molotov on top of the sign, and if he sees anybody's shadow on the wall, he's going to Molotov and back up. That's as simple as that. A lot of players are doing this on A site these days. Shadows in CS2 are just overpowered, to be honest. So this is what they're doing, and uh, that's what he's doing here. You know, he's on this sign. If in they were to see anyone, he'll molly here and jump. And by the time this guy gets through the molly, Jimmy is already backed up into donut and it's just too late. Um, and there you go. I don't know why he mollied. Uh, I, I don't I don't really like that, but whatever. He's going to know he's going to walk out here. Now, one of the things that's important to know is that, remember, Jimmy is no stranger to how mid works. He is aware that these timings exist. Um, he's going to be ready for it. Exertion's in the best spot possible, though single-handedly allowing jimmy to play this spot where he holds a from back donut and uh yeah i i can't lie there's no nothing really to talk about on ct side but what is important to talk about in a game like this is that jimmy is actually 
really good. Like, he's a player where when I'm watching him play, I'm thinking, like, dude, there's not really a player that does something like this. And for him to be so young, to be put in these roles where he's throwing nades for other players and to still be the one that's coming out on top, and for Mouse to make it a point that he never goes first on T-Site, I think it's insane. Um, again, not the not the most insane demo review that I've ever done, but just highlighting players going into playoffs, I felt like he was one of the names that we had to talk about because of just how impressive he is. And uh, yeah, if you did learn something from the video, I'd appreciate if you guys subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new to the channel as well, I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to see any more demo reviews, let me know. I will be leaving for Copenhagen now. I leave as soon as this video is finished recording. So I'll be in the major, but I'm watching every game in the stadium. And when I get back, I'll cover all of the exciting games as well as hopefully have some footage from inside the arena if anything cool were to happen. So yeah, that's going to be it for me, boys. I appreciate you guys for coming to watch these demo reviews all the time. Much love as always, and I'll see you guys when I get back. Peace.